Hello. In this video, we'll talk about uh, evaluation of matrix effect qualitatively. For this purpose, we will use the post-column infusion method. In this case, we will inject our matrix sample to the LC column and mix the effluent from the LC column with the standard solution that is pumped with the infusion pump. These solutions are mixed, to get mixed together in the TPs and then are then directed to the mass spectrometer. To do this, we need two things. First, we need the samples that we are going to inject from the LC part and we need the solution that we are going to infuse with the infusion pump. So before we can start with our experiments, we need to consider what concentration we need for this infusion. So, in general, we do not want this concentration to be too high, because high concentrations may not be influenced by matrix components in the same way as the low concentrations. Therefore, in our diabendazole analysis in tomato, we'll try to keep it close to a medium concentration level. For example, we know from the injections that uh, the middle of our working range is about 0.05 milligrams of diabendazole per one liter of extract. So now we can calculate how concentrated our infusion solution needs to be. First, let's consider what is the analyte rate that is reaching our MS. So, for this purpose, we need to know the medium concentrations from the calibration, the injection volume, and our peak width. So, if we know from, from previous that our diabendazole peak is about 0.5 minutes wide, and our injection is one microliter, then we know that the rate that this diabendazole reaches ionization source is about 0.1 nanograms per minute. So we want to keep this infused concentration in this post-column infusion experiments quite similar to this. And therefore, if we know also the, the flow rate of our infusion pump, which guarantees a stable flow, then we can calculate the concentration also for the infusion sample. So for this rate and for our infusion pump that is stable at uh, 8 microliters per minute, we know that this concentration so should be 0.01 milligrams per liter. And I have this solution prepared in here. Another thing that we need are the samples that we are going to inject to, from the LC part. And today we are going to analyze two samples, the tomato extract and the garlic extract. And we also need a solvent injection to compare these extracts with. So in practice, we'll connect the effluent from the LC with the standard solution that is being infused in a tea piece and direct this mixture to the ESI source. So we'll analyze this sample with our normal LC gradient, but in the MS we will only monitor the, the fragmentation of diabendazole throughout the, the chromatographic run. So now when we have collected the chromatograms of all these three runs for the solvent, for the tomato extract and from the garlic extract, we can start analyzing the signals. Here we have the chromatogram that corresponds to the injection of solvent. And we can see that the signal is nice, steady, somewhat increasing due to the increasing ionization efficiency with the increasing organic solvent content in the eluent with the gradient. Now let's overlay this chromatogram with the one that was obtained for tomato analysis. Now we can see that for the tomato analysis there is a suppression at the dead time. This is very common and is usually caused by 
color matrix components or by the salts that we used in the sample preparation. Otherwise, the diabendazole signal is not influenced by the uh, tomato matrix. But now, when we also add here the garlic chromatogram, we can see that again at the date time, the signal is suppressed, but also a strong suppression occurs after six minutes. We can see a very severe ionization suppression. Therefore, in tomato matrix, we can expect that the diabendazole signal is not suppressed. But for garlic matrix, we can only assume it when diabendazole eludes between three and six minutes. A very similar profiles can also be expected for other compounds.